Today, we're looking at a red ink by Mont Blanc, Leonardo da Vinci. Now, as always, there's timestamps down below so you can skip around, but if you've got the time, I'd appreciate you checking out the entire video. There's also a link in the description to the red ink playlist if you'd prefer to look at some different red inks. Now, if you're new here, I'm Adam and I'm an ink guy. I get inks, test them, and get the results to you. And if you're not new here, I'd like to welcome you back. The first three writing samples are done on Clairefontaine, Tomoe River, and Rhodia paper. And let's jump into the first one, 90 GSM Clairefontaine. We have no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, it does shade. That smear is because of me, but it does have some shade. Look at the Leonardo, where it starts darker, gets lighter, gets darker, gets lighter, gets darker again. Not too bad at all. The extra fine is about the same tone as the stub. With no feather spread, halo sheen, a very nice shading, especially for a red ink. Brown starts dark, gets light. Quick goes dark to light to dark. The goes dark to light, five seconds to dry. Medium is the same tone as the extra fine, with no feather spread, halo sheen, moments of shading, or actually not bad shading, jumps, starts light, gets dark, gets light at the bottom of the P, but darker back up the P, into the P, and the S. Nine seconds to dry. The scrubby for both do show some color variation, far left to far right, and we are getting it in the writing. And a smear test, you could recover it if you smeared while you were writing. To have a range of experience with this ink, all of the writing samples are done with this Jinhao 159 with a 1.1 stub, this Jinhao X450 with a medium, and this Jinhao X750 with an extra fine. Then a Sailor 1911 Pro Gear Slim with a fine nib was inked up, used for a day, and used to take the notes for this video. Now let's take a look at the second standard paper, 52 GSM Tomato River. Minor ghosting, not bad at all for Tomoe River paper. No bleeding. The 1.1 has no feather spread. It has halo all over it. Take a real good look here for those that have not realized what halo is all the way through in a stub. Those dark lines all the way around like magic gnomes came in after I finished writing and outlined everything with a much darker tone of the red. Gorgeous. No halo, or sorry, no, no sheen, and it does shade, and it shades not nearly as well. You see the D is a little bit lighter than the rest of Leonardo, but the, the, the haloing there is just amazing. The extra fine is lighter than the stub, with no feather spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade, 10 seconds to dry. Medium is darker than the extra fine, not as dark as the stub. With no feather spread, unfortunately no halo, no sheen, no shade, 21 seconds to dry. The scrubby of the extra fine shows a tiny bit of color variation, though we're not getting it. The medium shows a tiny bit left to right. We're still not getting it. And a smear test, you're not gonna be able to recover if you smear while you're writing. I agree with Vita. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. A line of ink is put down, and then it's put into water for 10 to 15 seconds. And this appears to be a true prime red as you see it going up. It's watered down at the bottom and getting much darker at the top. Now the one on the right is allowed to dry for 10 minutes, and this is a great example of why multiple chromatographies are helpful. It appears very much the same, but look at the very top dark red line, and you're going to see spots of turquoise showing up. You do see a little bit of separation of that turquoise right there, which that's what's giving this red its great shading. Amazing. Now, I'm not expecting any resistance from this ink based on that chromatography, but it performs so well. The last standard paper is 80 GSM Rhodia dot pad. We have no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is quite a bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen. It does have shading. Look at quick, starts darker, gets lighter, gets darker. Brown goes from dark to light. Dog goes from dark to light. Six seconds to dry. 
Medium is much darker than the extra fine, just a tad lighter than the stub. With no feather spread, halo sheen, no shading, 10 seconds to dry. Scrubby of the extra fine shows us color variation, which we get. The medium shows none, and we got none. The smear test, there's a maybe on recovering if you smeared while you were writing. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. This smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, it's performing fairly well. There's a blowout going on in the lowercase h. That's probably why I would not use it in a note-taking situation. I just am in fear that the tiny bit I do lose might be the most important part. It did incredibly well considering how it looks in water, which is completely reactivating and lifting it off the paper. We're seeing the white of the paper come through. Pen flush does everything that water does and nothing more, but it only took water to get it out of my pen. One third bleach solution is completely removing it from the paper, but there's gonna be no need to use that to get it out of your pen. For the next writing samples, the paper is changed up quite regularly just to have a bunch of different experiences. And this next paper is Twisby notebook paper. We have no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. The extra fine is a bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, some shading spots like the RO of brown is lighter than the rest. Over goes from a lighter to darker and the is very dark, four seconds to dry. Medium is about the same tone as the extra fine. With no feather spread, halo sheen, it is showing some shading, brown goes dark to light to dark, fox goes medium to light to dark. Over goes lighter to darker and only six seconds to dry. Now they both do show some color variation far left to far right and we do get it in the writing. In the smear test, you probably could recover it if you smeared while you were writing. For the inks tested, the average viscosity was 2.5 with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Mont Blanc's Leonardo da Vinci has a viscosity of 3.19, making this a very dry ink. If you're interested in how the viscosity is tested or how the bell curve's made, check down in the description where you're gonna see a link to that video. Now let's take a look at the next writing sample on monocoque paper. Love saying that name, monocoque. The only thing that appears to even be close to a bleed spot is at the scrubby, which is not a big deal, and we have no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. The extra fine is lighter than the stub. With no feather spread, halo sheen, it does shade. Look at brown going darker to lighter. Quick goes dark to light to dark. Five seconds to dry. Medium is much darker than the extra fine. With no feather spread, halo sheen, no real shading, nine seconds to dry. The scrubby of the medium shows some color variation, although we didn't get any. The extra fine shows some, and we did get some. But the smear test, unfortunately, you would not be able to recover it if you smeared while you were writing. For the inks tested, the average dry time was 17 seconds, with the realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Mont Blanc's Leonardo da Vinci has an average dry time of 10 seconds, making this a faster drying ink. The last writing sample is the one that viewers always want to see people tortured with. 20 pound copy paper. Let's just start out with the idea of does it bleed? Yes, it does. Is it ghosting? Yes, it is. It's feathering through its bleeding and ghosting. However, it did not touch the page underneath, which is in itself good news. The medium. It's feathering all over it. It's tiny, but it's all there. It does spread to about a broad. It has no halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is about the same tone as that medium. It does have tiny feathering all over it. Not the kind that would stop most people from using this. It does spread to about a medium. No halo sheen, no shade, one second to dry. The scrubby shows us we're not gonna get any color variation, and we didn't. The smear test, luckily it dries so fast, you're not gonna smear while you're writing. Instead of finding inks that look like Mont Blanc's Leonardo da Vinci, I would prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I went with a gray ink because I did not want to draw any attention away from this, and I chose Jay Herban's Gris Nuage. 
Now, if you'd prefer a different complement color, then take a look down in the description where you're gonna see links to those playlists. But what do I think of Mont Blanc's Leonardo da Vinci? There is a showing of the same nice shade and slightest brown lean that I'm enjoying. I think this might be a win because I don't normally like reds or Mont Blanc's, you know, limited run or specialty inks. Despite that, I enjoy this, although it is largely unobtainable. Unobtainium. Unobtainable? Unobtainium. Hard to find. So what nib and pen will give the best writing experience with this ink? I really prefer it in a dry fine to get a nice tone and great shading. Plus, that will have the added benefit of letting this very hard to get a hold of ink last longer. I hope you got something out of this review and tomorrow we're gonna take a look at Blue Snowball Nebula Twinkle. I think I have that all right.